Oh, oh, oh their weapons are back online, but... I am so good at this. They're nearly down anyway. Mm-hmm. If you destroy the drone uh, control, their drones become, like, inactive. If they get the drone control repaired, then they just wake up again. Ooh, uh, okay. the ship, oh, okay. The ship hello. breaks apart, and you're relieved to know that you're still one step ahead of the fleet. I got... All right, in addition to this stuff, I got an anti-ship beam drone level one. Now, I need a drone control center to actually deploy that. So right now, I'm just going to be carrying it in my cargo hold. And now I'll show you some of the, the upgrading a little. All these systems can be upgraded, which means to have an additional bar that they can have, you know, additional level of energy in. Mm -hmm. You can also upgrade just the reactor itself to increase the total number of energy bars to allocate. And also, That's also very, very useful. Yeah. And also, and these don't require power, is uh, you can upgrade your piloting so that you have... Um, which allows you... Normally, you can't dodge or make go to FTL unless you have someone actually in the cockpit. If you upgrade your autopilot, you can. You can upgrade your sensors to see, like, inside the enemy ship and see more and more details about them. And you can upgrade your door system to, uh... Basically, uh, make it harder for enemies when they're... Make it harder for fires to get through doors and for enemies to break them down when they're in your ship. You can also do this thing where, um... And it's really, really fun to do. Uh, you can... Um, lock the enemy boarding party out and cut off their oxygen. Plus, it can basically jettison them into, into space. Yeah, you can. You can, unless your door control is damaged, you can open and close doors on your ship, which includes airlocks. So it's yes, just, if you can barricade an enemy into part of an area, it's a perfectly valid tactic to just like open doors so that they don't have air, and mm -hmm. then their health will decline once the air runs out. But for now, I'm gonna go for upgrade. Now shields take two bars. So you're pumping up the. All oh, right. I have a second. I have a second shield now. Now, uh, shields take two. Uh, a single shield takes two bar, two bars of shield energy. Sh two bars of energy into in the shield system. Okay, so having three three shield three having three bars and shields doesn't really do you any good. Except I guess I guess if you took a single damage to the shield, it would hurt. You would, your shield wouldn't go down because it would hit that unused bar first. But for the most part, there's not much point to having an odd number in your shield system. But yeah, shield upgrades early on are a good idea, generally speaking. Yeah. Scanners indicate that a battle is taking place nearby. It seems that someone is under attack by space pirates. Leave the ship. It's a space pirate heavy sector. It is. It, well, it's in wartime, and aid the civilian ship. Pl plus, Samus is on sabbatical this month. And <laughs> power up your weapons and engage the pirate ship. All right. This class pirate scout. Develop sort of a procedure. Let's follow it. <laughs> Federation regulations clearly state to immediately attack, regardless is, of situation. Yes. This what? is this is a really awesome prime directive. I got. Oh, say. we're hit. Oh. That missile, you know, it, it went through our shields. It hit this room where there's no system currently, so it just did hull damage. Ooh, their weapons are down, and they are down nice. to one hull. You know, the way the weapons work, it kind of reminds you of those old uh, cars from the 90s that would, like, they could flip up their headlights, and that was, like, a really big deal. <laughs> and then, and then, no, no, here's the best part. And then they don't work. <laughs> Your pirate ship breaks apart. You hasten to contact the civilian ship. It seems the crew did not survive the assault. You take what you can from the remains of the ship. Yeah. So Grabby, you... grabby. We, f we, f we feast upon the slain. <laughs> Alright, on to the exit. Usually there's nothing at the exit, or at least nothing hostile. Unless you wait too long and the rebels have taken over the exit, in which case you have to fight your way through and it's a big pain like I described earlier. Yeah. You've arrived at the long-range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Oh, oh you're immediately hailed by a mobile docking platform <sighs> upon arrival. Welcome to Uncle Joe's Fix-It Shop. Need a tune-up? We got you covered. Inquire about their specialty. You offer to upgrade your door subsystem in exchange for some scrap. Okay, nine scrap, which is which is less than it would cost for me to do it myself. Okay. So I'm going to agree. He replaces your doors with cardboard. You let their team on board, and after a short time, they finish their work. Upgraded the doors by one. Excellent. Nice. Let's see what it says now. All right, we now have blast. Okay, yeah, now we have blast doors. So, and also the sensors um, and uh, the doors, like they can be manned like other systems, and basically manning them gives them the capabilities as if they. Gives them, like, makes them as if they were upgraded one level higher than they actually were. 
Nice. So if you, if you just have regular doors, but you put a guy at the door controls, it'll it'll act as if they have blast doors, for instance. All right. All right. Distress. Oh. We have time. Let's go. Let's see this distress beacon. Oh, why not? And die. You, lo <laughs> you locate a nearby human mining colony where an unknown disease has spread virulently. They are setting up a quarantine to contain it, but a riot has broken out. Okay, we have choices now. Send in your crew to help control the crowds. Two, ignore their request and move on. Now this could like bite you in the ass, right? Yeah, the yeah these are like these are sort of semi-randomized. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, there's what, what do you what, what would you advise, Dave? I don't know. I mean, like, there. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the other possibility is that we could uh, is that one of us could get infected, or yeah, one of us would be like left and we could lose a crew member. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore the request. I'm gonna ignore it. Move on. Unfortunately, your mission is too important, and you're not willing to risk your crew. You prepare to move on. They will curse your, your ship's name for generations to come. Curse you guys who kind of showed up and then kind of left. There we are. Oh, sector. Okay, I think, now, I think here, that they're too busy dying, but anyway. Now, here's the sector map. You generally, like, each map, each sector has it links to, uh, usually, most of them they link to two. And there's mm -hmm. different types of sectors. Green are civilian sectors, red are hostile sectors, and purple are uh, nebula sectors, which I freaking hate because you can't, your sensors don't work. Oh, okay. So, now we have Uncharted Nebula or Abandoned Sector. I'm going to go to an Abandoned Sector. Oh, okay. This is where we'll meet the, uh, actually, the new, uh, the new race added for the Adan Advanced Edition, the Lanius. This sector was the site of many major battles between the Federation and Rebel fleets. Strangely, there's very little evidence of those battles remaining. Nick dies of dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> now that thing about, there's, strangely, there's very little evidence of those battles remaining, we're going to learn a little bit more about why that is. Oh, they actually put story in this. <laughs> yeah, this that's a little bit. Yeah, there's actually, the abandoned sector actually has very slight elements of actual, like, setting. <laughs> Beyond, you know, hey, there's spaceships. Mm -hmm. A rebel autonomous scout is exploring this beacon. You attempt to hide behind a nearby moon, but the ship finds you and begins its assault. Oh, okay, it's got a cloaking device. When it's cloaked, I can't target it. It also knows... It's kind of weird. Our, our, our weapons don't charge either. So, which makes me... So I assume that, like, when they're... An enemy ship is cloaked... Is I don't know. <laughs> which, make, which makes me assume... It seems like the, the charge-up time for your weapons is the, is, is the time... It actually means, like, the time it takes to target the enemy ship. Right. Rather than the amount of time it takes for like them to fill up their you know capacitors or whatever, but oh, every shot missed. Wow. <laughs> He's not doing any better. I'm noticing. Oh, and now okay, their cloak is down. Yeah, well, luckily we have two shields now, so they've got. Yep. Okay. Oh, you know, notice my shield is blue. They hit me with an ion weapon. Yeah. I ion weapons. What they do, they don't do physical damage, but they uh, disrupt systems. If your shields are up and they hit the shield, it'll temporarily blueify part of your uh, system, which basically like it prevents it from like recharging properly. We've been tartar controlled. And and like once the shields are down, they can hit like the engines or the weapons, and they temporarily will like become less effect, lose some of their function, depending on depending on how much ion damage is done. But the thing is, ion damage doesn't damage the hull, and it doesn't it goes away on its own. All right. All right, now, okay, yeah, now our shields are back up. Right in the brain. Yep. Any second now? Give there we go. Done. Now when it doesn't really matter, we hit three times in a row. You know, it's nice to know that um, uh, in the Space Age future, we still abide by Queensberry rules. That's good. That is... Not even, even, in, even in a time of civil war, not all is lost. Yes. All right. Ooh, it's store. Ooh, let's go shopping. You arrive at an empty space station, no doubt abandoned due to the Lanius threat. Life signatures are detected at the ship depot, and you spot a few crude signs stating, everything must go. Alright. Oh, sweet. See, there's not much to choose from here. There's some drones. You got the clone bay, cloaking. Well, you got the drone control. Actually, we really can't because we can't afford it now, but there's the drone control, which would allow us to deploy, uh, you know, deploy and control drones. Do you want to fix your ship up? Yeah, I'm going to fix it up. And I don't really anticipate him making use of drones myself, so I'm going to sell this beam drone. Okay. Let's look at our, our ship, see if we can do a little upgrade. There's no point in there's no point in upgrading our weapons right now because we don't have our our full arsenal only requires three bars. 
and there's no benefit to, you know, having more than you... There's no benefit to, like, overcharging them or anything, so... I'm gonna upgrade the engines. That'll make us... Give us faster FTL charge up time if we need to make an escape. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, it'll... Eh, actually, what the hell, I'll go for two. And, perhaps more importantly, in most situations, it'll give us better evasion. Okay. Level, our level 4 dodge 20 FTL 1.75. <coughs> Alright, now we have no money at all. And the Rebel Fleet knows how to book it. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they... Uh oh! We're in an asteroid field. Asteroid fields, it's basically you. both ships periodically just get whacked by asteroids that like do one point of shield or hull damage. You can potentially, if you damage an enemy ship, and, like, they can just get beaten to death by the asteroid field. You don't even need to do anything, potentially. Of course, the same can happen to you. Right. <laughs> this is, so now I'm glad I have that second level of shields. This beacon appears to have been set up within an asteroid field to access a mining settlement. However, half of the settlement has been disassembled by a number of lanius scavengers. Their military escort moves in to scare you off. Now, the lanius are this weird alien race. They seem to have trouble communicating with other aliens. Like, they... Uh, like, they can't really, like, they have, well, you, you'll see in some of the events, like, they have trouble, like, uh, c translating their languages to you. And they seem to be fixated on scavenging metal, whether from asteroids or from ships. And not just wrecked ships, either. Some of them will just, you know, they, they, they see, um, they, they see a ship flying, a live ship flying by, and they think, hey, metal. <laughs> All right, I see those, those asteroids whacking into us. You coming? Oh, nice. Oh, and that asteroid actually hit their weapons before I even fired. Oh, charging their FDL. Well, they're well down they to should one... have thought about it before they picked a fight. Oh, huh? the, the, uh... <laughs> saves me the trouble. Thanks, God. <laughs> you should... All right. Okay, now, now normally it would just allow us to jump right away, but since we're in a hazardous area, we have to wait for the, the drive to actually charge. Right. Alanius Merchant appears to have a significantly improved translator, as you clearly understand their message. Metal content more than sufficient. Does your ship care to exchange resources for our excess metal? Agree to the exchange. We can trade four drones for 37 uh, scrap. Decline or decline, but ask about their translation device. Let's ask about their device. Okay. Yes, it is quality. Our ship contains excess. Care to purchase? I don't have enough money to buy it. So I'm going to have to decline. No wonder. This one does not mind this ship. They pull away and you're left to wonder what they meant by that. Now what they meant by that is it turns out their translator device that they sell you is actually one of their crew. So, oh. th so if you do that, you actually get a Lanius as part of your crew. I think one of your uh, subsystems is damaged. Your door. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> just... You just got these doors. I'll just see. Notice now we can't jump because there's no one. At, there's no one at the helm. Now what? Is, oh yeah. What is the max amount of crew you can have in your ship? Eight. Eight. Wow, that's actually really impressive. Yeah. Oh, okay. See that little thing appeared by my by, by John's name. These are the crewman's stats. You have uh, five skills from top to bottom: their helm, engines, shields. <laughs> Weapons, repair, and hand-to-hand, -hand, and shipboard combat. And they, imp they improve as you as you practice them, basically. So you see Dave, his engine is increasing. Nick's uh, uh, weapons is increasing. Shooting things is increasing. Yeah, and John, you know, his helm has been increasing, and as you can see, his repair has increased very slightly. Sometimes you can recruit new crew members that are already, like, you know, highly skilled in particular areas. And also, the advantage of, of a human crew over other species is that humans, their they, their skill increases somewhat faster. All right. <coughs> Let's jump. Mm-hmm. Might as well jump. Jump. And... These backgrounds aren't, you know, super technically advanced, but they're, they're really pretty. Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Short-range scanners may recover useful materials while we wait for the FTL to charge. Recharge. I'd give it a shot because you have the shield power and engine power. Explore the asteroid field. Aha! You haven't become an abandoned mining site. A few mining drones were left behind and could be repurposed. Oh, we got a drone and 34 scrap. Nice. 
as opposed to just Sweet. as opposed to a message telling us that we just you know got the shit beaten out of us by an asteroid, which is also a possibility. Which is also possible. Oh yes. Oh, an image of some weak and hungry humans comes onto your screen. Those metal bastards think they can just absorb half of our engines and leave us here to die? I hope you understand the need to take your ship by force. Uh-oh.